Hello everybody, uh, I decided I'm going to start doing some video reviews, see how it goes, maybe people like what I have to say, maybe they won't, but anyway this will be the first of many I hope, <laughs> I'll just review things I've seen from now on, and um, yeah, if you have a question about anything I might have seen in the past, um, just ask, I see a lot of touring shows, um, a lot of regional theater. Um, I've seen a few pre-Broadway shows and I try to go to New York at least once a year so I'll start reviewing those because I'm actually leaving pretty soon for a trip this summer. Anyway, the reason for this video is that yesterday I went to the matinee of the Spongebob Squarepants musical in Chicago. Uh, I know a lot of people were extremely skeptical about it because, A, Spongebob Squarepants doesn't exactly um, cry out for the musical treatment. It almost seemed weird and something very capitalistic about it that Nickelodeon was just trying to make money. But, and the fact that they got on all these, like, famous people to write a score that's usually a score is written by either one person or you know a very small group of people but they got on I want to say at least 15 different singer songwriters bands uh, whatever to contribute to it um, and I'd say at least 95 percent of the songs really worked and meshed together and I think that's probably uh, has a lot to do with Tom Kitt, who uh, was half of the collaborative team of Next to Normal and If Then and many, many more. He did the orchestrations for this, and it really made all of the different styles and types of songs really gel together really, really well. Um, so, I'm going to go ahead and say this is the spoiler section, because I'm going to go over the plot. Uh, basically, so, if you don't want to be spoiled, um, hit pause and fast forward a little bit. Um, basically what happens is that Spongebob wakes up, it's a normal, everyday, Bikini Bottom Day. That's the first song, Bikini Bottom Day. Um... And he's headed off to work, and it's just normal, and Squidward's there, and he sees Patrick on his way, and then he stops by Sandy's tree dome, and everything's great. And as soon as he gets to work, there's this giant rumbling, and everybody's just like, hmm, what was that? That seems kind of weird. Um, but they kind of just write it off. And then as the play goes on, they learn that this giant volcano that is in close proximity to Bikini Bottom is going to erupt. And Sandy, who is a scientist, that was my dog, um, who is a scientist, she has estimated that they have two days until uh, it erupts and Bikini Bottom is just gone. So everybody's kind of freaking out and they they're all just trying to come up with some kind of plan and Sandy being the you know the smartest one there you know she tries to tell everybody that she can create this invention that might be able to stop it and you know if they all work together they might be able to get it done well nobody listens really and then Plankton who is always the villain of all the Spongebob episodes is also a villain in the musical. He is conspiring to hypnotize everybody in Bikini Bottom. And in order to do that, he would have to have them all in one place. So he convinces the mayor of Bikini Bottom to put on this music concert to raise money to get an escape pod to get away from Bikini Bottom. And he plans to hypnotize them all on that escape pod. So the play goes on and they start raising money uh, for this thing and nobody believes Spongebob or Sandy and they're just working towards the science experiment 
to try to save Bikini Bottom themselves. So they get going and they get going and basically they end up at the top of the volcano and they throw the, they called it the, um, oh, what was it? It was a really clever name. It was cute. It was like the, no, I can't remember it. Something imploder, exploder, something, playing on those words. Anyway, uh, they get up there and they throw it in and they just have to wait to see if it works and they get back down to Bikini Bottom and everybody's still freaking out and he's just like, hey guys, we did this and in seven minutes we'll know if we're all going to die or not. Uh, and then uh, the invention obviously works. It's a happy ending because it's a very family oriented show. And yeah, it's just a really, really cute, simple storyline, uh, but it works really well for its purposes. Um, there were a lot of great songs in it. Uh, like I said, the score really actually gelled together very well. Bikini Bottom Day was the opening number. Uh, and then Patrick and Spongebob, they had their own little duet called um, BFF. And then the David Bowie song was sang by the um, Anchorman. It was called No Control, and it was basically just announcing that Doomsday is coming. Um, Daddy Knows Best was a song um, by that was sung by Mr. Krabs and Pearl, his daughter. It was a really, really cute song. It didn't really add much to the plot, but um, the woman playing Pearl, let me see, I always forget her name, uh, Emmy Raver Lampton, who is alumni of Hamilton, she played Pearl. Um, her voice was absolutely amazing, so I kind of forgive that song for being in there because it was just a really great moment for her to stand out. Uh, and then Spongebob's big I Want song is called Just a Simple Sponge. Um, when they, when Spongebob, Patrick, and Sandy decide to, you know, do this and pursue it, they sing a song called Here Is My Middle Name. And then there's another weird kind of subplot that I might personally cut with Patrick. He kind of leaves the group because it's the end of the world and these people start following him and it's really funny because it's almost like he's the leader of this cult um and he sings a song called super sea star savior and um it was a it was a great song for that actor played by danny skinner it was a great song for him to showcase and it was really the only thing he had to really showcase his talents besides his stuff with spongebob and sandy so i mean he was great but the song was just and could be cut because I didn't really move the plot along. Uh, then there was an Act 1 finale called Tomorrow Is, and it's basically just a giant cliffhanger of what's going to happen. And then another really weird thing that they added, they didn't add it, it's been in there, but if you're a fan of the Spongebob TV show, you'll know that there was always um, some episodes with Patchy the Pirate, and he's like Spongebob's number one fan, and blah blah blah, so... He is a character in the show, kind of outside of the show. Uh, at the very beginning, he comes in, and he's, like, trying to sit on the stage, and the staff is like, you have to get down, and it's all, you know, a funny little bit. Uh, and then it happened again in, like, the middle of Act 1, which I thought was weird, because it literally had just happened, and they got on him. And then he was the one who opened Act 2, and him in the ensemble sang a song called um, Poor Pirates, written by Sarah Bareilles, and it really, in my opinion, did absolutely nothing for the plot. It was, it was a great song, uh, but definitely one that should be cut, and I wish Sarah Bareilles could have written a, a song for somebody else that may have moved the plot a little bit better. Um, like The Mayor, The Mayor was a great, 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 great character. Um, she was really, really funny, and she was played, I always butcher her name, and she's so brilliant, she was, um, Stephanie J. Block's understudy in 9 to 5, her name is Gallen Gilliland, 
I believe I'm saying that right. Anyway, she played the mayor of Bikini Bottom, and she was really, really funny. And I would have much rather seen a song go to her, because she was a really, really minor character as the mayor, but a song really could have bumped her up to a supporting status. And if I had to restructure the plot, I think it would have been really, really interesting to see it kind of go the direction, I don't know if anybody's familiar with Anyone Can Whistle, um, but basically the mayor is the villain, and she's out for money, and blah, blah, blah. And I think that would have been a really, really great homage um, to that forgotten Stephen Sondheim musical if they had chosen to go that way. But Plankton is the villain is still really fun, and I missed it describing Act 1, but Plankton sings a song called When the Going Gets Tough, written by T.I., and it's a rap number. <laughs> it's the only rap number in the show, and a lot of people on the message boards and people who have seen it and were reviewing it before me uh, really didn't care for it that much. I thought it was fun, and it was a great dance number. Um... So I would definitely keep it in. Um, and he was played by Nick Bellamir. Uh, and he was really, really great. And um, and then other highlights from Act 2. They did a reprise of Bikini Bottom Day. And then for this concert they are putting on to raise the money for the um, escape... Um, what's the word? Escape pod. Um, there's, like, this band that's, like, really, really big and you know, the ocean called, um, the Electric Roller Skates, and they come and they sing a song called Bikini Bottom Boogie that was written by Steven Tyler and Joe Perry of Aerosmith. Um, and then Squidward, played by Gavin Lee. Oh my gosh, you guys, he was absolutely brilliant. He sings, um, there's this gag throughout the show, he always tries to start this big musical number it's very, very Broadway, and everybody ends up cutting him off. And he has this dream sequence where he actually gets to perform it. And it's a song called I'm Not a Loser. And it's this big, giant, show-stopping tap number. It was absolutely brilliant. And if this transfers to Broadway, he definitely has some awards in his future if the show is well-received. Um, and then there was a great, great, great song written by Lady Annabellum when Spongebob and Sandy are scaling the volcano uh, called Chop to the Top, uh, which is in reference to their um, karate love. Uh, then they finally get down and they're waiting to see what happens, and they all sing Best Day Ever, and I was actually genuinely moved. It was really, really sweet. Great moment. Um, then... Uh, everybody saved, and what her inventor was supposed to do was to uh, suppress the lava, and it would just release bubbles from this device that she threw in. And so bubbles flooded the theater. It was really, really cool, really, really nice. So that was basically the um, plot in a nutshell. Um, our SpongeBob, I haven't mentioned him yet because I wanted to mention him alone. His name is Ethan Slater, and... From everything I've read in his bio, it seems that he is um, very much a newcomer. He doesn't have any Broadway credits yet, um, and he was absolutely great. Everybody in the show paid great homage to the characters from the TV show without making it a plain imitation, which I really, really liked, because uh, it wasn't very... it wasn't kitschy. And then I have to do a shout out to the set designer. Are you in the playbill? You have to be. Where are you? Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, anyway, I'll find it and I might post it in the description if I find it. Um, the set was absolutely brilliant. Their whole premise for the set was to make it out of things that might be found in the ocean. So it was like the jellyfish were umbrellas held by actors, and the coral was made of like pool noodles, and it was all really, really inventive and really creative, and it popped. It was extremely colorful and fun to look at. 
Um, and the costumes were also brilliant. SpongeBob was not wearing square pants, and which is fine because that's the thing we're, as an audience, suspending our disbelief. Overall, it's a really, really, really fun show, and I hope I might get to see it again sometime in New York. I think it will definitely transfer. Uh, so yeah, to all those skeptics out there who thought this wasn't going to be great, me being one of them, um, I am fully prepared to say that I was wrong, so definitely check it out if you're in Chicago. It runs through July 10th. Um, and... Wink Wink could be going to Broadway this season or maybe next, so keep an eye out for it. Thanks, guys. Where's the button? Where's the button? Where's the button?